Hey, hi guys, how's it going? So one thing I wanted to tell all my new subscribers is to go back and watch all of the videos that I've produced in chronological order. Now, uh, typically when you subscribe to YouTube channels, for example, when I subscribe to a YouTube channel, sometimes you might subscribe to one that produces a lot of content. For example, like Tim Pool. He's producing so much content, you would never go back and watch all of the thousands of videos he's produced, partly because it's also you know, only relevant to the news cycle at the current time that the video was produced, and also just because it's just too many. Sometimes, on the other hand, you subscribe to a YouTube channel where there's very little content, but the videos are worth going back and watching all because they're all quite good and it's not going to take that much time to go watch all those videos. So in this case with my channel, for all the new subscribers, please go back and watch all the videos that I've produced. The longest one is the very first one, and that's about an hour. That'll be the longest one, and that's a very technical scientific discussion. All the other ones are shorter and a bit more fun and a bit more easy. But uh, do go back and watch all the videos that I've produced just to get yourself up to speed on, uh, on everything about this. So another thing I want to discuss now is uh, my interview with JF. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it below in the comments or in the uh, video description. So basically, at the after my discussion with JF, uh, basically his argument was, well, you're referring to a conceptual model, but it's not the real thing. The real model is in in the 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 3D models or the general circulation models or something like that, right? So I actually had that argument presented to me from another professor at the university that I work at. He came to my office and said the same thing. He says, the model that you're referring to with these flat earth diagrams isn't the real thing. So I just wanna talk about how strange of a disconnect that is. So what they're trying to say is that this flat earth model that is taught universally in textbooks and across science classrooms isn't the actual real thing. That the real thing is something else in the models. That's called the hand-waving argument. So isn't that strange? So Think, for example, if you were to learn Newton's laws of motion. So do we learn Newton's laws of motion by learning something that is not Newton's laws of motion? So we're gonna teach students Newton's laws of motion and the laws of thermodynamics or something by teaching them something that is not Newton's laws of motion and that is not thermodynamics. Wouldn't that be a very strange way of going about physics and education? That, that argument is so nonsensical, it's so fallacious. And I can't believe people, you know, come up with that. It's such a silly rebuttal, especially when it has just been demonstrated uh, that this actually is the foundation because the references have been, provi been provided from peer-reviewed literature and from uh, all the textbooks and from the websites and educational outreach material, and it's taught in classrooms. It's so strange to then say, well, this isn't the real thing. The real thing is something else. So then at that point, it's like, okay, sure. Then what is the real thing? And they just say, it's in the models. It's in the higher order models. It's in the 3D models. And it's like, you are just claiming that. You are just hoping that that's the truth. It, it, it's such a strange, fallacious argument to make. So what they're saying is that in physics classrooms, we teach things that are not the things. And the real things are actually something else that you can't actually identify. I mean, in physics, right, we have equations, we have theories, we can write down the equations, we can tell you what the cause and effect relationships are, we can tell you why one thing causes another thing and what the mechanics are and how this is the, the mathematics that explains that. And that is what is done with those flat earth models. That is what is done to explain their climate science greenhouse effect. But then they turn around and say, that's not the real thing. That's not actually the real thing. The real thing is actually something else entirely in the models that they can't actually point to. And so I have actually had that response quite a bit. I mean, it starts off when you talk with a climate scientist, you ask them, what is the greenhouse effect? And what they will do is they will refer to these flat earth diagram models that you've all seen in my book and on my other uh, YouTube videos. That's what they do. When you ask them, they refer to these. And then when I point out what the problems are with these, that it's flat earth, that it's inventing a mechanism where the climate has to create itself, that uh, the sun, they're saying, cannot create the climate, and that they're creating a heat recycling mechanism here that violates a lot of laws of physics, then they turn around and say, oh, well, that's not the real thing, actually. The real thing is something else, else in, the, in the general circulation models, in the more complex models. And it's like, well, that's a very strange disconnect. How come you're disconnecting 
those two things. I mean, obviously you're disconnecting it on purpose because you know that you've been caught out and you need to hide something. That's why they do it. And then so when I ask them and push them, tell me what the real thing is then. I would like to know what the real thing is in the model. In physics, we have math, we have equations, we have cause and effect relationships, and we can write it down. So I'd like to know what it is. And they say, well, it's conceptually shown in these diagrams. <laughs> so they create their own closed loop argument where they pretend that it's not relevant. They refer to the thing without referring to the thing. It is the strangest thing in the world. So here's how the argument goes. Let's get rid of this for a sec. Come on, where are you? Okay, so they say the climate greenhouse effect of the flat earth model isn't the real climate greenhouse effect. The real climate greenhouse effect is inside the large scale models and it's naturally inside those models. It just comes out, even though we can't actually say how it comes out and point to any mathematics other than these flat earth diagrams, which we deny are relevant. <laughs> they themselves deny are relevant. <laughs> so strange. Um, so I point out that this is a very strange disconnect when I have these arguments and I just had this argument with a professor at my work. And when I ask climate scientists for the real climate greenhouse effect and references as to how it actually does work, well, then they all reference back to the flat earth models. He said, well, that's because it's only conceptual. And so then I, again, ask for the real thing. And I also point out that, sure, maybe the flat earth model is only conceptual, but it demonstrates a principle. It demonstrates a physical principle in mechanics that's supposed to be physics. That is, and physics is universal. It occurs everywhere. So this conceptual model that they've created with flat earth, sure, let's just say it's conceptual. doesn't matter that it's flat earth, but the mechanics being represented there should function anywhere where you have the physical conditions such that that principle, the physical principle demonstrated there with the climate science green effect, greenhouse effect of heat recycling should function. And so uh, this is a mechanics which comes out of itself derived on flat earth theory, but even in, but even, uh, in that case, even aside from that, it should still conceptually function in a real greenhouse, which it does not. It does not actually function in a real greenhouse. So that's the extent of their position. I point out that it's a closed loop. And when they say that the climate greenhouse effect is in the GCMs, when asked for references as to how it works, they refer back to the flat earth models, which should function in a real greenhouse, but don't. That's a closed loop created there in which no reference to how the climate greenhouse effect is actually supposed to work then is provided other than the flat earth derivations, derivations which whose principles and mechanics should function in a real greenhouse, but don't. So again, it's a pretty obvious self-referencing loop there and an easy uh, conclusion to make as to what happened there and as to whether you should accept that or reject it based on whether it's fallacious reasoning or not. It's obvious fallacious reasoning. Um, so basically, they want to refer to something, a conceptual model, which on the other hand, they cannot prove actually exists, and they actually deny actually exists and is relevant. So they refer to it, but then asked if it's the real thing, say that it isn't, and then have no references to the real thing at all, other than to say that it's in the models somehow and comes out of the models, but they can't tell you what the math is, other than referring to these flat earth models, which, as I've pointed out, violate the laws of physics and are based in flat earth theory. Okay, they have no position. They, they just have no position. They come up with these arguments to try and get out of how they've been caught out. And I'm surprised JF did that. Really surprised that he did that. <clears throat> so here, I'm a scientist. So what are the standards of accepting something in science? The standards are very simple, okay? So what would be required for me? I, I will gladly and readily go out and publicly resend everything that I have ever said, if these conditions can be met, okay? Because I'm a scientist. So one, first condition, show me some theory. Not just any theory, right? Because a person can show me flat earth theory, like Owen Benjamin or someone like that, but I'm not going to accept it just because you presented me a theory. It has to be theory that's based on sound, physical and logical foundations, consistent with existing well-established laws of physics, which can be tested. Theory which can be tested, say. So not just any theory, such as flat earth theory, because I'm going to reject that. It has to be theory that's based on sound physical and logical foundations, not flat earth theory, not where it's violating the laws of thermodynamics, consistent with existing 
well-established laws of physics, such as the laws of thermodynamics, okay? So that'd be the one thing. Show me some theory. Don't just say it's in the higher order models somewhere, and this other thing that we're teaching isn't the real thing, as if that's how we teach physics. As if, like I've taught physics before when I was a grad student and whatnot, I've taught classes before, as if, as if when teaching Newton's laws of motion, we teach something else that's not Newton's laws of motion. And then when the kids find that out and say, well, what are the real Newton's laws of motion? I wanna know what the real ones are. We just say, well, they come out of models when you write models, when you write model code. That's what the professor said to me. And I said, when you write code, you have to write the equation. You have to write it into it. And he says, no, it just comes out. You don't have to write it. And I was just like, I write code for a living. And I'm like, you don't have to write the equations in the computer code? Like, what are you talking about? Like, they, they're just trying to hide. They're just trying to find any way to hide from the reality that what they've done is accepted flat earth theory into modern physics. Okay, so following on from theory, what else does a scientist require? Scientist one requires theory, two requ require evidence. Show some empirical evidence that the pro proposed theory is supported by measured data and that there are no other explanations possible or that this theory that's been proposed is the best current explanation, okay? Very easy to do, very easy to do and science or should be easy to do, okay? So what has happened? The only existing theory basis, theoretical basis for the climate alarmist greenhouse effect upon which all of this whole climate science, climate alarm debate and this pol insane political movement insane political movement is based on is these flat earth diagrams that's the only existing theory that exists for the climate science greenhouse effect that is the only place it comes from that is the only existing theory for it to say that it comes out of the models magically with equations that we can't write down but somehow they're in the code and come out of the <laughs> please be scientific and rational about this please come on especially if you have a phd in physics come on so the only existing theory is the flat earth models where sunshine is too cold to create the climate. And so the climate recycles heat in order to create itself. That's the only existing theory, okay? Now, following from that, this principle, the principle in the mechanics purported, proposed by that theory should actually function in a real greenhouse. But real greenhouses, do not demonstrate that function. Real greenhouses demonstrate that they only function by the stoppage of convection. They do not generate the temperatures inside, you know, of 200 degrees Fahrenheit and higher that, would, that they would have to if the greenhouse effect were in operation, the climate science greenhouse effect. If climate science rated a greenhouse effect were in operation, greenhouses should get to like 200 Fahrenheit and fire and, and higher, but they don't. They only get to the temperatures expected from solar heating alone and from the stoppage of convection. So there's already empirical evidence. So, so on my side, one, I can demonstrate that there is no theory for the climate science greenhouse effect. And two, I can demonstrate, and I have on my side, that there is no evidence for the proposed mechanism of the climate science greenhouse effect. So I have a tight closed loop argument, and all that they have is to say, well, that's not the real thing. That's not the real thing. The real thing is in, is in higher order, more complex 3D general circulation fluid models. And it's not written actually down in code, in math, it just is there somehow. And what we teach in class about how it works and what the mechanism is, isn't actually the real thing, although that's what I can only have to refer to when I want to explain how it works. <laughs> so it's like, I'm gonna teach some Newton's laws of motion, but these aren't Newton's laws of motion. These are something else that don't actually exist. And the real Newton's laws of motion are something that comes out of computer code magically when you don't even have to write down the equations, which would be Newton's laws of motion. Can you believe people come up with arguments like that? Can you believe it? Okay, so that's that for now. So as I said, if you're new, go back. Uh, very little graphics, very little uh, stuff in uh, this video. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about, please go back, watch all the videos that I've produced. Uh, anyone who's been watching will know exactly what I'm talking about. And so this whole, you know, after my interview with JF and after this argument I had at work with this professor, you guys, you have no position. You can't make that claim that you're making that it's 
not the real thing. And then you can't actually identify what the real thing is. Like, come on, as I've been discussing or anything about in this video. Okay, so I hope you guys had a good time and I will talk to you later. Bye. How do I turn this off?